So good morning, this is Bob Chu from Stewart Boatworks again with another latest launch. Um, we've been having a lot of very interesting wow launches here lately, uh, and this is certainly another one. Brand new 23 Stewart Boatworks single 300 Yamaha full tower boat. This boat we built very, very specially for Captain Josh Jordan. He's from the Lower Chesapeake Bay area. Um, angler, marine artist, awesome guy. He was very specific as to what he wanted out of this boat, which was has special meaning to him, and I'm sure later we'll have him tell you all about that. Um, in the meanwhile, I want to apologize for my voice. Didn't have a voice 24 hours ago, so this is a pretty good shot. Um, welcome aboard. So we'll start in the bow, of course. Um, one of the most difficult choices Josh had was forward seating, or of course we build the flush floor with a coffin box forward. Being a hardcore angler like he is, doing a lot of casting up in the Chesapeake, uh, he really was leaning towards the flush floor, but came back and decided to go forward seating. A lot more storage, he does have a family, um, it is important that they have some comfort in the boat as well. So that was really the driving force behind the, the ultimate decision. So uh, Josh went with combing pads across the, the bow with the forward seating, cushions to fit, access to the latches, um, minimal hardware, which is our norm, as, as you know. He did choose the removable backrests. So in literally one minute, you can convert this boat by removing these cushions and the backrest, put them inside the console, back to hardcore fish, if you feel the, the need to remove them. Um, our big fish box, which everybody is familiar with if you've seen other videos, uh, this insulated fish box has two inches of foam insulation on it, and of course it's cord, which some builders think that's insulation. It does have insulation characteristics, but it's not a purely insulated box at that point. So this is fully insulated. Um, also chose, uh, Josh chose to have a gas shock put onto this lid. Again, our norm is no gas shocks, keep it simple. But in this case, he wanted to hold it open because this will be his primary fish box. So he wanted it, we did it. Uh, last feature here, of course, is uh, up forward. This is a cooler by nature. We have a day cooler inside of it, but um, it's also a live well, secondary live well to uh, provide additional location for smaller baits and things of that nature. So before I go up in the tower, just wanted to mention the foredeck here. Of course, Josh and I laid out the deck exactly the way he wanted, where the rod holders are, what degree angle the rod holders are for his particular type of fishing. Um, also, don't want to ever overlook our monstrous anchor locker top access hatch, which really makes anchoring an ease. Of course, our backing plates that we always talk about behind our cleats, the oversized backing plates, backing plates behind the rod holders. Now moving to the tower, um, Josh had very specific conversation about this. Um, first off, tall windshield. Uh, being up in the lower Chesapeake uh, Bay area, he's going to fish late in the season and early in the season, I mean, almost all year round. And so he wanted as tall a windshield as he could get. So we, we met that requirement. In the tower itself, it's a regular Stewart Boat Works hard top, but we modify it with a cutout door to access the full tower section, the folding tower. And of course, this aluminum is fabricated by Bosch Aluminum in Stewart. And they did all the tower work as well as the powder coating for us. So I'm gonna go ahead up. So one side entry here on the port side. It is currently locked down. Open it. Now it's locked open. Coming back up. You can skip steps, whatever's right for you. We have an excessive number of steps, but more is better than none or fewer. So bingo, right up into the tower. Um, 
It is a two-person tower. Josh and I were up in it this morning when we raised it. Um, it joins in the middle here with two Allen screws per side. Um, it's got the nice full control box, optional Edson wheel, Yamaha six inch gauge, the Garmin, um, eight inch Garmin above here, fusion remote control for the stereo, all your Yamaha switching, Lenco trim tabs, everything you'd expect. Little storage compartment here, um, comes with a deep uh, Yeti style drink holders, three rod holders across the back. Josh wanted a folding footrest, so we added that versus the previous one that did not have it. So it's a really nice, comfortable sitting for one, depending on who your partner is. Two is definitely doable. Um, did a nice boot stripe to match the boot stripe on the hull, painted in all grip paint. Um, one of the other things that was very unique, and this is what Josh uh, prefers, is the forward-facing rod holders. Um, the concept here is rods are in place as you're running, searching, and looking. As soon as you see something, slide the rod out, shoot, and uh, makes sense. There was a little head scratching going on around the shop when we first, uh, when this top arised, arrived, but uh, it makes sense to me. So. Um, Again, this folds down with four Allen screws. Um, forward section folds down, has a landing there just forward of the Garmin radar. Aft section folds back, first lower the VHF and the stereo antennas. But I can tell you from up here, I can see a lot more than you can see down there. So uh, one nice attribute of the, of the way Josh laid out the boat was the six drawer tackle center lockable um, here on the port side. And you know, real offshore tackle drawers definitely can get in, you know, big lures in here and so forth. 3700 series Plano trays, Lock lockable. All hidden fasteners, which is our norm. Great tackle spot. Okay, so over on the starboard side, we have access to inside the console. But before I get there, I just want to point out one thing that Josh requested after a conversation was a means of holding the door open. Again, we're minimum hardware, less is more. But in this case, he wanted it, so we came up with the uh, magnetic door holding device, which makes perfect sense, and there's a good chance it'll become standard on the boats going forward. So inside the console here, this console was designed originally for this boat, for the 23, and then it was adopted as a larger console on the 27, um, and displacing the smaller console that was on the 27. So down below here, we have five foot six headroom. So I can almost stand. Um, tons of storage here. The concept was a lot of our customers run to the Bahamas. They need place for luggage, not duffel bags, but actually suitcases for families and so forth. You could probably fit eight suitcases inside this console. Massive. Or a head. Most of our customers don't choose a head. Um, battery shelf to keep the batteries up off the floor. A battery charger. Uh, two group 31 um, AGM all glass mat. North Star batteries. And of course the C-Zone system with the digital switching. All nice and clean and sweet. Overhead light for nighttime usage. Then heading aft to the main focal point of the boat. Of course, dominated by our custom helm pod. Josh wanted something really, really tasteful, give it that custom sport fish look. Um, so we've done pods before. This particular one is topped off. Besides the stainless flush hardware and the underside helm, this one is topped off with an Edson old school satin wheel with power knob, just like it's up in the tower. Uh, coming back to the, the helm area, Garmin VHF, 16-inch Garmin, multi-function display, of course, Fusion Stereo. And I think later we'll have Josh maybe mention a little bit about the memorial plaque. Yamaha gauge, uh, C-Star Power Assist steering because of the second station, the tower. We use C-Star Power Assist so it has a display that gives you all the readouts as to what's going on with the system. 
um, transfer button, start button, trim tabs, and of course our C-Zone system. Don't want to overlook that. As you come below, acrylic door again, all hidden fasteners, same on the side door. Um, and this gets you into the really clean wiring, circuit breakers. There's excess room. We, we hide the covers for the electronics in here and so forth. And this, of course, pulls out completely for servicing. But as an owner, this is not an area that you would typically need to get into. It's also lockable. So now we're looking at the leaning post live well which if you've seen a lot of these videos, you know this is built by uh, Birdsall Marine to our specifications to fit the boat. But one of the cool things that Josh wanted for this boat because his grandfather is gonna uh, go with him, you know, fishing on a somewhat regular basis, he wanted armrests. Got, got a hold of Bobby uh, Birdsall, talked it out, came up with the concept. It's really simple. Up, out of the way when you don't want them down when you need them. And we've done some shooting in this boat in rougher water earlier last week. And I can tell you what, these things came in so handy. Um, it was really, really nice design. Other than that, you have, of course, storage below. Typical fiberglass storage tray. Some junk in there now. Um, tackle centers on either side. Good for hooks, swivels crimps, smaller items. You have two trays, tackle locker, one on each side of the live well. Fold down footrest, all powder coated with a nice anti-skid on top of it. Of course, it's toe kick all the way around. Uh, as you move aft, four rod holders, two drink holders, the little tray, rigging tray, um, and of course, the, the basis of the whole thing, a 40 gallon circular leaning post, live well, um, no stand pipe, clear lid, you can see the bait all the time, and uh, this absolutely holds bait really well. Coming back to the cockpit sole, um, these are storage compartments as standard with rod storage, which Josh chose the boat to have. Um, you can see the rod holders here, gas shock. Um, again, less is more, he wanted gas shocks, cool. Again, we're thinking about making that standard on, on the rod locker fish, optional fish box location. Nice thing here is he can keep his rods on board and it is a lockable jam latch. Uh, moving aft. Saltwater wash down, fresh water on the port side with the, with the nice hose bars to keep the hose up off the cockpit sole. Um, self bailing, of course, uh, you know, I've done so many of these videos and if you're, this is your first one, I'll bore you with the, or I'll enlighten you to the fact that the way we drain all of our gutters. If you've seen these before, it'll probably be boring. But all of our gutters for all of our hatches, starting in the bow, running aft, coming here to the bilge hatch, they all have a fiberglass tray glassed underneath the deck, and they all come back together and network together. They join the cockpit drains and then drain overboard, directly overboard. So it's super clean, no, no hose clamps, no hoses, nothing to rust, nothing to break. It's the way big sport, custom sport fish boats are built. So now we're back at what I think is one of the more beautiful parts of our boats, which is the transom. Um, you know, this to me is very much like an inboard boat. It's, it's crowned across the transom, just like an inboard boat would be. No transom door. We like total security. You can see the height of the freeboard. So if you're fishing aft here, you're in total safety, no concerns. Or if you have little kids, you have no concerns about somebody maybe stumbling into a splash well. No little transom door to play with parts and pieces. If you do want to get over, just do this. I mean, I'm an old bugger and I can do that real easy. So you have the beauty, the structural integrity of a solid big boat type transom, but no gadgets. Again, it's Stuart Boatworks, no gadgets. 
So now we move to the bilge access. We pride ourselves on having what we consider big boat bilge access. I think it's the best in the industry on a 23 foot boat. Nice double, double sided gel coated hatch. The gutter system that I discussed earlier. When you get down into the bilge, everything is accessible. Uh, immediately here is a shut off to the fuel tank for when you're changing your fuel filters. Um, here we have saltwater wash down pump, transducer, freshwater wash down pump, fuel filter, live well pump and seacock, saltwater wash down, seacock and pickup, and just aft are two bilge pumps with digital float switches. The one is mounted slightly higher than the other, and the idea of that is that um, if you were to have a failure, a malfunction of the first bilge pump, the, uh, the, when the second pump came on, that high water alarm would go off. You'd hear it at the helm on the C-Zone system. You'd know to come aft and look aft. But the beauty of this is we can lay this out the way you want it. This is the way we chose to because Josh wasn't here to um, you know, choose and select. But I don't think he would have done much different. And somebody, even of average size, I guess my size perhaps, I can actually get into that bilge and access everything. Super clean, super accessible, super simple. So now, um, last but not least, the power. Single 300 Yamaha. This boat was designed for a single 300 four-stroke. Um, we have sold them with twins, but it really was specifically intended to be a single engine boat. Um, this motor is so perfect for this boat. The boat carries 100 gallons of fuel. With 90 gallons of fuel on board, earlier last week, with four adults on board, uh, at 4,200 RPMs, just below the 4,500 RPM uh, rated trim RPMs, 4,200 RPMs, the boat ran right at 37 miles per hour. 90 gallons of fuel on board, um, light on gear, but otherwise, yes. Um, with the tower. So I mean this boat uh, wide open in a hard top version is a 50 mile an hour boat. Uh, this boat, although we haven't done it yet, it's probably a 46, 47 mile an hour boat. Awesome application, reliability, durability, all the nice things you know about an F300 Yamaha. Super clean and a huge open uh, transom area for diving, snorkeling, whatever you want, to pull out swim ladder, garlic ladder, just super clean. Another great Stuart Boatworks boat built specifically for the owner, exactly the way he wanted the boat in every detail. Thanks again. If you want to see 23 Stuart Boatworks, we have two of them in process, um, as well as other boats, of course, but uh, we're we're ready, willing, able to build the boat of your dreams. I think at this point we'll probably have Josh say a word or two. And uh, again, I appreciate you taking the time to check out this video. Thanks very much. All right, well, uh, I'm Josh, Captain Josh Jordan. I came across Stewart Boatworks initially online in my search as I was looking for what I was going to go with with my next boat. Um, I knew I was going to be very particular about the entire process as I got to start cutting my list down and was weeding out some of the other manufacturers um, and Stuart made the top five of my list when I cut it down narrowed it down to five builders um, I flew down here to Florida and one of the big things that really attracted me to Stuart Boatworks was that everywhere you go, nearly every boat manufacturer is going to tell you just why exactly they, they're the best boat builder out there. Um, when I got to Stuart and met with Bob and Richie, I didn't feel that. I didn't feel like they were telling me why they built the best boat. And I felt like everything they showed me proved why they exactly they built the best boat and that they would build the best boat for me and myself. And that's what really caused me and influenced me to decide to go with Stuart Boatworks. Okay, um, 
why I chose the 23 Stewart Boatworks hull. Um, first and foremost, when I got to Stewart, I felt like their fit and finish on their hulls, all of their hulls, was absolutely second to none and incredible. Um, that was something that I was absolutely requiring with my next boat. Um, beyond that, Bob took me out on a 23 Stewart Boatworks hull for a little bit the when I was down here originally and the boat ran flawlessly really just eats up the chop throws water away from the boat as opposed to over the bow um, I was very pleased with the ride um, this will be a much smaller boat than the last boat my father and I uh, fished on together so I still wanted a you know, really nice quality rod for my next boat um, once I had chosen the 23 was going to be the platform for me I had some criteria as to how I was going to go about outfitting it um, first and foremost I was going with a single engine application um, and really the only thing I considered when I was talking to Bob about power for the boat was the 300 Yamaha um, you know, I felt like that motor has just been incredibly well received throughout the industry and second was Bob we've got to have a tower on this boat will the 23 um, you know accept the tower and how's it is it will it change the ride quality and, and to be what I want it to be um, when it looked around there's you know a lot of half towers and stuff like that up on the Chesapeake Bay where I'm at our water is a little bit dirty at times um, we're looking for brown fish and greenish brown water most of the day so every inch of extra height you know it makes it a little bit easier to see these fish when we're up there trevia fishing in the bay and I really was my heart was set on a full tower um, I had told Bob the last tower boat that my father and I ran, it took three people to safely lower the tower. And I said, Bob, that's not going to work for me. Here's what I need it to do. I want it to be a one man operation. I don't want to have to call somebody and rely on someone else to come give me a hand raising and lowering this tower. I want to be able to go up there, pull it up by myself without too much struggle and have it be ready to go. Um, and we talked ex extensively about how I wanted the tower of the boat to, to, to really accommodate my needs. Um, it needs to be wide enough for two people to be up there comfortably, which we absolutely achieved. Um, backrest seat and fold down uh, a fold down footrest which will fold up and be out of the way i uh, chose to go with electronics and stereo system up in the tower as well and something in me said i called bob one day i said bob you know i I've had an idea in my head for years now. I've always thought it would look sharp on the boat, but I don't know that I've ever really seen it done or a lot of it. And he said, I said, I think it would be an easy thing to do. I said, well, what is it? I said, and you know, have you ever seen the boot stripe done around the lower edge of the second station helm box? And he says, well, no, I don't think I've seen a lot of that. I said, well, I think it would really look sharp in tying the complete boat together with the color combinations and he said okay we'll look at it and myself being a bit of an artist I every time I had a question what it might look like on the boat my curiosity couldn't stand it I had to prove it to myself what it would look like so I went into my tablet took a picture and digitally drew in a bootstripe just to see what it might look like and sent it to Bob. We both agreed that it really looked, turned out looking nice. Um, and I am blown away by with how it, it's turned out. Um, the tower seems extremely comfortable, 
sturdy. There's not a no issue of it being unstable. It's just jumping in the background. I apologize. Um, if I had a rod, we'd have to cut this short. But overall, I, I felt like this hull would be the absolute best fit for me in my area. Um, I see this as being a very versatile boat for up in Virginia, off of North Carolina and offshore Virginia. I think this will be an awesome uh, ride to go out there and really target a lot of big offshore species as well as be very comfortable inside of the Chesapeake Bay when we're fishing. So I knew when I had chosen to go with Stuart and from the start, um, when I was first approached by my mother and told after my father had passed away that he had told her that he wanted me to go and have my dream boat built. Um, I knew right away, I told her, I said, well, you know what, I'm gonna name it after him and I am gonna absolutely do something special to the boat to make sure that I can honor his memory and that every time I step aboard it, I'm gonna think of him. Um, when I came and I, I told Bob, I said, Bob, you know, I really wanna do something special and, and accent my helm and console. I wanna do a memorial plate for my father to honor his memory. And I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted it to look like at the time. Um, you know, I had an idea of the wording and what I wanted it to say, but I just didn't know how big to make it and everything else. And I said, Bob, you know, is this something that you think is going to look right? You know, should we worry about the size of it? And Bob told me, he said, Josh, you know, I got it. Don't worry. Just I'll make sure that it looks right and we'll do our absolute best to honor your father's memory with that plate. Um, the, the way it turned out was absolutely incredible. As you can see, it looks gorgeous and really accents this dash very nicely. Um, I couldn't be happier to have that on my dash so that my father will be riding with me every time I use this boat.